sources of sound, vibrating strings and air columns. As stated before, uh, sound requires a medium to travel through or to be produced from. Uh, vibrating strings, uh, when work is done on them, when you pluck them, it will produce standing waves within those strings and they'll vibrate to and fro. If those vibrations occur within 20 to 20,000 hertz, sound will be produced. Also, sound can occur within air columns, vibrating air molecules, uh, also when disturbed, will produce sound. In both cases, standing waves are produced and sound will occur. The sound occurs, occurring, or the pitches of sound occurring depends on the physical properties of these strings and air columns, perhaps the length or the type of air or material that's being vibrated, the tension in the strings, the mass per unit length of the strings, and so on. So physical properties will determine the pitch of sound that we hear. The strings on a guitar can be sh effectively shortened by fingering, uh, raising the fundamental pitch, so short guitar strings will make high pitches or high frequency sound, and long strings will make low pitches. The pitch of a string, uh, a given the the pitch of a string of a given length can also be altered by using the string of a different density. So guitars will play different musical notes based on which string you pluck or how long that string is. Also, another factor is tension. A piano uses both methods to cover more than the seven octave range. The lower strings at the bottom are both much longer and thicker than the higher ones. On this next slide, we can see that in general, as you increase the length of a string, you would increase its pitch. A piano uses both methods to cover uh, the octaves again, but in general, these strings are relatively long and you end up with long waveforms as compared to down here you end up with short waveforms again this is a low frequency or a low pitch and up here is a high frequency a high pitch the product of length and pitch are a constant given the wave equation we know that the velocity of a wave is its wavelength times its frequency. Therefore, if wavelength or length goes down, frequency will go up. Wind instruments do not create sound waves by vibrating strings, just as guitars or pianos do. Wind instruments create sound through standing waves in columns of air. And as stated previously, the speed of sound in air is a, is a constant. Therefore, if we use the wave equation, the velocity is the product of the wavelength times the frequency. So since the speed is a constant, I'll just abbreviate constant as CON, the product of the length and we'll say the pitch or a constant. If that's true, increasing the length of an air column will usually decrease the pitch. In this picture are three different musical instruments. A soprano saxophone, which is a rel relatively short length or excuse me, that's an alto saxophone. Probably what's a tenor saxophone, which is a moderate length. And then lastly, a long saxophone. I believe this is a tenor saxophone, which has a long length. So recalling this, the one with the shortest length will have the highest pitch, and the one with the greatest length will have the low pitch. This in part gives 
these musical instruments, even though they are appear to be the same, they have different characteristic voices. More on voices soon. As stated in previous slides, we note that small musical instruments like a, like a soprano sax will usually play uh, high pitches and large musical instruments like this tenor saxophone will play low pitches. But that's not the only way to play different musical notes with an, a musical instrument. Uh, an alto sax or a soprano sax or a tenor sax can play a variety of musical notes not by changing the shape of the musical instrument producing different musical notes but by changing the rate in which you vibrate the air column within that musical instrument itself. This illustration involves three different tubes tube A, tube B, and tube C. If you take note that these tubes are all the same length. A tube open at both ends, like most musical instruments, has pressure nodes and displacement anti-nodes at either end. So this is a, an air column, which is a pipe. In order to produce a standing wave with a pipe that's open on either ends, you need to place anti-nodes at either end. So there's an anti-node located at the left end as well as the right end. If we look at the second tube, which is similar in length, there's an anti-node again at the left and right. And again, a similar length once again, left and right. What's different about these tubes? The waves that are contained with them, the standing waves, have different frequencies. What this means is that you could play a musical note of a certain frequency, which happens to be F within this. You could also play a different musical note, which is a higher pitch because we've decreased the wavelength and increased the frequency. So you could also play a musical note that's two times the original frequency. And then again, you can contain three times the wave, so you'd get three times the frequency. If you note, as wavelength goes up, frequency goes down. So as you go from top to bottom, you're increasing the frequency or the pitch. This first tube contains half a wave, or one half of a wavelength. Therefore, its wavelength would be the wavelength of the wave contained would be two times the length of the tube. This wave, con this tube contains one waveform or one wavelength. Therefore, the wavelength will be equal to the length of the tube. And then lastly, the third tube, which is identical length to the other two, contains 1.5 or 3 half waves. Therefore, the wavelength is going to be 2 thirds of the length. And big picture here, as wavelength goes down, frequency goes up. So as you go from top to bottom, you will be playing a higher pitch. Those being F, 2F, and 3F.